Hi everybody and welcome to I Like Cruise Ships, the YouTube channel and welcome to a new video. Uh, today we're here in my office here in Perth, Australia. Uh, if you are a follower of the channel, uh, you'll know that I'm at home here on, uh, I guess, a long-term vacation or uh, between contracts. Uh, if you've not watched I Like Cruise Ships, the YouTube channel before, uh, welcome. Uh, I hope you find this video interesting and also there's a lot of videos in the uh, channel in different playlists about cruising, about uh, walk-arounds of the ports of call, and just different information about cruising in general. Now, today's video is actually uh, going to be a little bit of a voiceover style video with some uh, footage that I've obtained from Royal Caribbean about uh, the safe and healthy return to cruising. Now, I've actually watched over this video a couple of times, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to voice over the footage of the Quantum of the Seas uh, restart of cruising out of Singapore. And I'll give my sort of opinion, I guess, of uh, some of the protocols they put in place in regards to safe and uh, healthy return to cruising. Now, of course, this is Royal Caribbean's point of view and how they've set it up. Of course, other cruise lines uh, may have uh, or may or may or will have similar things in place when they return to cruising. So it is kind of interesting to see uh, some of the things they've got in place already and what to expect when we do return to cruising uh, on different cruise lines. Now, if you're not aware, I worked uh, on Carnival Cruise Line for the last 20 years, and I think uh, kind of a lot of things we'll see in this video will be incorporated to how Carnival will start up. Uh, maybe Norwegian Cruise Line, MSC... Costa and the like, uh, they'll all follow fairly similar protocols, particularly uh, whilst, I guess, this pandemic is still ongoing and where it'll come to a kind of slowly come to an end in the near future. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the video now and we're going to uh, basically just watch through it and talk about it and I'll come back at the end and give some final thoughts. Okay, let's check out the video, shall we? So the voiceover here is going to last around about 12 or 13 minutes, and it'll go over all the different procedures that they put in place uh, on board the Quantum of the Seas sailing out of Singapore. So mobile check-in uh, or the mobile app check-in isn't necessarily a new thing. They're just going to be forcing more people to use it uh, before getting to the cruise terminal and before obviously boarding the ship. Uh, all your information can be pre, uh, I guess, installed into the app. And you can do that at home before you board the ship. Uh, there's your photograph and all your details. And then basically accepting the terms and conditions and checking in. And then once you're at the terminal, then it'll uh, then create the barcode for you. You'll see there the information about your boarding and to go to the terminal and check in. So there is quite a few uh, additional things that are going to come into place. Uh, temperature checking. And you'll see here there's basically the, the screener that's checking as people are walking through the terminal with basically the heat censored uh, maps. There is some of these already in place at airports around the world. It isn't a, a new thing to some people, but to most it will be. This is fairly seamless. You'll kind of walk through the terminal and then you're sort of through to the next stage. Wellness screening uh, basically will entail uh, answering some questions and basically uh, where and when, where have you been recently and things like that. Uh, very straightforward kind of question and answers that you'll need to just answer to the uh, check-in staff. They're checking your temperature there. That's becoming the new normal in a lot of places now as well, even in shopping centers, uh, airports as well. They're just basically confirming that you're basically within the temperature range at the time of boarding, even there for the children as well. Of course, a lot of people are going to get having to get used to this, so that's not something we can avoid, I think, at this stage. Um, yeah, venue check-ins and temperature checks. This will happen around the ship uh, as you're entering different areas of the ship. They'll basically do it on a continuing and ongoing basis. The uh, young guy there had the little face recognition uh, scanner as well. And then there's the manual temperature checks. And then also the pointing out there going into the different venues like the casino to use hand sanitizer. And then also the facial recognition uh, for the temperature check as well. Also, he was pointing out the bracelet there as well, which is uh, something that Royal Caribbean's introduced uh, to allow for uh, recognizing social distancing as well. 
Uh, yeah, it's very interesting, all of the app technology. There was a point where people were trying to disconnect from using social media and phones and things like that on cruises. And then here it is back again. This is a really interesting thing, the virtual uh, muster station drill or boat drill. Uh, you'll be able to do it basically on your TV in your stateroom or on your phone. And it will go through all of the, the information about the embarkation of lifeboats, the use of life jackets. You'll see there the little video of the life jackets on your cabin television, uh, the location of your muster station from your stateroom. And then they've got another simple check-in sort of process there. D3 is the muster station. And then they'll basically walk you through. And then this is actually to validate that you've understood the safety uh, information given at check-in or once you're on the ship. So this will go. This little part now will go through some of the different areas of the ship. Uh, this is obviously very Royal Caribbean centric. So the uh, kids' club here, where they're pointing out putting the shoes safely and into a separate uh, little storage. Uh, a lot of the kids' clubs on all the cruise lines don't, you know, do and don't want you to wear shoes. Uh, of course, washing your hands is becoming very normal. Uh, this is one of the youth activity people pointing out for the young uh, guy what to do here. And then one thing that I find interesting is those dots on the floor. They're obviously social distancing markers, but I'm not too sure how quickly the kids will get kind of bored of having to be on the dots and things like that and playing games separated from each other like that. But that's, again, the, the new normal that's coming. Uh, this is the check-in for the uh, iFly. Uh, again, temperature checking. Uh, they're giving basically the information about what you need to do to go on the actual... Uh, experience. You'll see there the people are separated by distance in the seats. There is dots marked on the floor there. So if you've never seen uh, the iFly, it's very cool on a cruise ship. So you can actually go you know, skydiving on a cruise ship if there's such a thing, but it's in an enclosed area. Uh, the Flow Rider is another unique thing to Royal Caribbean. This uh, isn't really too different to what's normal if you've ever been on this, but they're obviously going to have reduced capacity. So this is really pointing out the same thing. You'll see the dot again on the floor there and how they've separated the young guys from each other just to create the, surf, the social distancing. Normally, there's a lot more people waiting in line to do this. So they're obviously just going to slow down the amount of people going on to it. Uh, the pool deck, again, social distancing signs. And there's a little bit of a video running on the overhead screen there as well. You'll see how the, the chairs are quite a bit more separated to uh, if you've cruised normally. They're a lot closer together. So there's that one and a half meter distance around the pool area. Uh, you also see the, the lifeguard there wearing a face mask as well. Pretty much all the employees have to wear them at all times, uh, which, you know, I mean, it's going to be a little bit, uh, maybe, uh, I don't know, in, interesting to see at first, but you're going to be getting used to it. Again, here you'll see the, uh, the markers on the floor where they're wanting to create the distance between people. Uh, hand sanitizers at all venues. That's actually normal on a lot of ships already. They've got them in place in the in the, going into the restaurants and different things. Uh, pretty much the uh, Dodgem cars here on the the ship already have the social distancing. But of course, uh, I'm not too sure. This is not too different to it, it normal if you take a cruise. One thing here, you'll see them sanitizing the the rides afterwards as soon as people have finished, and in between riders, they're going to be sanitizing things. You'll see there the wipes and the sprays that they've got. Uh, that'll be pretty much mandatory on all uh, different uh, activities that you do. Uh, the North Star is their overhead uh, viewing platform. And they're pointing out using the hand sanitizer. Um, yeah, then you go up on this ride. It's, it's kind of a ride or an experience. Like a lot of Royal Caribbean activities are called experiences. Again, there they're pointing out the social distancing. They'll just have basically reduced capacity again. So less people on the uh, on the ride. I keep wanting to say ride experience. It's very neat this thing, by the way, if you haven't seen it before. Uh, but yeah, it basically just reduced capacity in there. Again, the dots on the ground. Here he is uh, wiping the handrails, which wouldn't be something that's normally done. It would be done on a daily and uh, you know a, a ro you know a, a, a shift or schedule anyway, but not to the extent that they're doing it now, where they're literally cleaning it between riders. Uh, here in the main theater is kind of interesting. They've uh, obviously reduced capacity again. You'll see here where they've marked uh, some of the chairs not available and some available. 
uh, just again to create that social distancing. Of course, uh, sitting together by family is is allowed. You're not going to be separated as much as what you think. But they have definitely sort of uh, allocated some seating uh, available and some not. So it creates the distance between people. Uh, one thing that I do find a little bit confronting in this little shot is actually the uh, the dancers and singers wearing masks during the shows. Now, that's for me a little bit too much, but I guess I've got an opinion on it, and I'm sure other people do as well. Again, right after the show is here, they've got the uh, the high fog sanitizers where they can kind of do all la whole lounges at the same time. They do actually do this in normal operation. Uh, it's not a new thing. You just don't see it as much because they do it in the late hours and early mornings and things like that. Here's again one of the other lounges. And you'll see again the sort of the little circles on the chairs where they've separated a little bit away the uh, the people from sitting next to each other. Again, the the dancers here with the masks on. This must be tough to do the shows with masks on. You know, the amount of heat and sweating that they go through. Then again, right after the show's finished, uh, the uh, housekeeping come in and they're sort of cleaning all of the areas. And here we are going into the casino. Again, they've got that every other machine sort of set up. If you've been to a casino during this uh, pandemic going on, you'll know this is already in place. Uh, but it's sort of something that's going to become normal on cruise ships. And then right away afterwards, the uh, cleaners are coming in to clean the machine that the person's walked away from. I mean, this, may be, this is going to be a lot of work for the employees working on the ships. I mean, the amount of cleaning that goes on in normal operation, but then to introduce it now, literally, as people get up out of the seats... And change seats is probably maybe a little, obviously a lot more than necessary, but it is required. I mean, that's, here we go again. You'll see the lady getting up and then someone will come over and clean the seat right away. They're very vigilant. Obviously, this is a recording, but this is actually really is the real life of it. This current ship is sailing uh, three and four day cruises out of Singapore with a very heavily reduced capacity. So where you may think that it looks empty, it really is. There isn't that many people on the ship, a, a ship that can hold three or 4,000 people down to, you know, uh, under 1,000 people. It's very, it will look a lot emptier when you look around. Here's the bartender here. You'll see again the uh, little markers on the seats where it's creating that social distancing between people. And then it's basically every other seat again where you can sit down on some you can, some you can't. Uh, again, you got to wear the masks in public areas and then you can remove them for eating or drinking. Obviously, that's sort of very normal here's again the kids uh or the adults as well at the hand washing stations these are very normal in in, in ships already the hand washing stations one thing there you'll have to be served the food at the at the buffets i think that was going to become you know normal anyway with all of this going on you'll see the young guy there getting offered the food and things like that you know a lot of the ships they already have servers in the buffet areas so that's sort of something not new, but it's sort of a part of it. Uh, you just notice there on that earlier shot there, the uh, the seating was separated again. Here's an interesting one in one of the uh, sit-down dining rooms. These two people are obviously sitting alone. Uh, maybe they don't know each other, but the guy's got up from eating his food. You'll see the waiter coming in now to clear away the table very quickly. So they're basically taking away all of the cuddlery knives and forks and anything that was on the table entirely. Um... You know, normally they'd leave some of the cutlery there and then just replace what was taken or used. Here he is taking away the tablecloth. So these will be replaced between every seating, literally, uh, which normally does happen in normal dining room cases as well, especially if they're soiled. And then there's a little sanitation team that comes in. So this will be a separate group of employees to come in and sanitize the tables and the chairs. You'll see them then wiping them quite extensively. And then the waiters will come back in a second or two and reset the table for the next person or the next uh, seating, I guess. So, yeah, I mean, these, it's kind of a little bit unique to see two individual people sitting at the restaurant eating. But, you know, I mean, where people are traveling alone or in smaller, smaller groups. And here are the waiters setting up the table again for the next setting. Um, yeah, it's very... Very interesting. I mean, I know a lot of things go on already, uh, especially cleaning, sanitizing, uh, replacing of cutlery, tableware, and things like that, and the, the, the tablecloths. But see it in action like this is very interesting. Uh, 
One thing also, they're going to be basically trying to go away from using the hand menus where they give out menus as you sit down for dinner and they're going to encourage you to use your phone and then the QR code here, which will bring up the menu for the dining room that you're in. Again, it's just less handling and not having to clean the even the menus between people holding on to them. Here's some of the high fogging going on in the in the lobby area here. This does happen actually on ships uh, on an ongoing basis, weekly, fortnightly, monthly. This is the guy at the guest services uh, cleaning around his station, someone in the, in the elevator here. Cleaning like this is very normal. Obviously, it's going to be a lot more normal now. And uh, the people doing these handrails, they do this every day on cruise ships, morning, noon, and night. But just that high fogging there is basically just a more intense way to sanitize an area of a ship. Here we'll see back again the Dodgem cars. Dodgem cars, bumper cars, where they're cleaning them between uh, sessions or between riders getting on and off. Uh, so again, they're in the dining room, they're cleaning the tables. So this is just a, basically just a little bit of an overview of them cleaning all of the different areas of the ship generally. Um, there's going to be a lot more cleaners around the ship. I mean, the ships will be just impeccable. I mean, they already are. We already know that if you've cruised before. But this is just next level cleaning where they're just doing everything they can. Here's the guy coming into the uh, balcony of the stateroom doing the high fogging again. I call this high fogging. I'm not sure what the official word is. But this is something they do normally do. Uh, they do high fog the rooms, not literally every day or every week and things like that. They do have a schedule that they follow to do this. This is a very normal uh, procedure that already happens. So yeah, there's some of the different things going on. Okay, everybody, what do you think of the video we've just watched? Uh, it is very interesting, some of the new protocols put in place. And there is a lot of existing protocols that they're obviously doing more heightened or they're doing more of, obviously cleaning and high fog spraying, temperature checking. Uh, I mean, for, for me, a couple of things I'll just point out that I find a little bit confronting, if you want to call it that, and that's the, uh, the dancers and singers wearing masks. That's a little bit too much, I think. Uh, seeing, obviously, every employee wearing a mask, uh, having worked on ships for a lot of years, uh, in normal operation, you'd only see people like cleaners here and there wearing them, deck and engine, where they're doing things that need masks and things like that. But to see every employee wear them, and also to see people wearing the face shields as well, that's a little bit more than the, what I'm used to seeing. Um, how do you guys think uh, of uh, some of the protocols put in place? If you like, write them in the comments. Uh, maybe we can make a bit of a follow-up video to this. Uh, how do you feel about cruising uh, when ships start back again, uh, particularly in the United States where it hasn't happened just yet? The video that we just watched here was a ship based out of Singapore. So one thing that's interesting, again, with this ship that we just watched, it's sailing out of Singapore. It has no ports of call, so we're not too sure how that's going to affect yet. Uh, also, it uh, had only Singapore residents, so it was basically sort of in a very controlled environment. Singapore residents sailing out of Singapore, no, days at, uh, no port of calls. So, yeah, it's very uh, interesting all the things that are going to come up in the future, particularly when ships start cruising to different Destinations like the Caribbean, uh, maybe South America, to Bermuda, to Hawaii. Uh, so yeah. So everybody, uh, thanks for watching. I like cruise ships, the YouTube channel. Uh, I know this is a little bit of a longer video, but it was sort of necessary to get all the different points across in the video that we watched. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, click subscribe. Uh, you can click the notification bell for new videos. This is completely up to you. I know there's a lot of people who aren't subscribed to the channel, but do like to watch my videos. Uh, there is a lot of other videos in the playlists. Uh, if you're a previous uh, subscriber, thanks for sticking with me. Thanks for watching the videos. Thanks for watching all the different videos not about cruising. I uh, hope you find them kind of interesting. If anyone's got any video ideas, put them in the comments. I can try to, my best to film something here at home in Australia. Uh, I'm not too sure what people want to watch, especially from people all around the world. So yeah, thanks for watching I Like Cruise Ships, the YouTube channel from my home here in Perth, Australia. And see you next time. Bye.